How expert top ten Chinese painting tips. How expert publishes quick how-to guides on all topics from A to Z by everyday experts. Visit howexpert.com to learn more. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more How Expert Top 10 videos in the future. Moving on, let's talk about the How Expert Top 10 Chinese painting tips. Number 10. Make a preliminary sketch. You want to plan out your painting before beginning to work on the silk. Take a piece of newsprint or drawing paper a bit larger than the finished piece will be. Use a soft pencil, 2B, to draw the outline of your painting. You want to be able to see it through the silk. If this is your first attempt at it, I would recommend doing something small, like a flower or plant. Traditional Chinese flowers used in paintings are cherry blossoms, chrysanthemums, water lilies, peonies, and Although a plant and not a flower, bamboo. The leaves of bamboo are quite graceful and lend themselves well to brush painting. Number nine, prepare the silk. You want to make sure your piece of silk is pre-shrunk and completely free of wrinkles. Protect your drawing surface with a plastic tablecloth. Put the paper drawing on the table and lay the silk on top. Traditional Chinese artists. Stand while they work with brushes. They practice forever doing calligraphy before advancing to painting. But we're Americans and don't have the patience to do thousands of characters before we can advance. Put something heavy on the corners of the silk to hold it down over the sketch. Be sure the sketch is dark enough for you to see it through the silk. Number eight, prepare your ink. If you really want to do this the authentic way. You'll make your own ink using a stick of pine soot and glue. Ask for a Chinese ink stick, and mixing it on the stone with about a tablespoon of water. You should have a small mixing stone with a short slope and a well for the water at one end. Get a Chinese ink stone. Rub the stick in the water, then up and down the stone until it's a good consistency, nice and dark. The ink. Will be in the well portion of the stone. If you aren't so ambitious, use ink that you get from an art supply store, which is pre-mixed. I use a small ramekin as a container. Number seven, choose your brush. You should dedicate a particular brush with a fine tip for ink only. Have a variety of sizes of bamboo brushes on hand for different parts of the painting. I have a fine-tipped brush that looks like a fountain pen. But instead of a nib, it has a tiny bristle. I find it easier than a bamboo brush for the outline. Use this to trace the outlines of your drawing. You won't have any second chances, so make sure every stroke is just as you want it. When finished, remove the sketch. Number six, set up your materials. While the ink is drying, prepare your other brushes and paint. Use Chinese watercolors. Place a couple of layers of paper towel under the silk to absorb the wet paint. Cloth towels are too thick, and the texture makes it hard to paint evenly. You will also need something to blot the paint with: a clean white rag or folded-up paper towels. You will be doing this many times over the course of layering paint, so have a good supply of blotting towels. Keep a container of water for mixing color and rinsing the brushes. Use a palette or plate to roll the brush on to mix the color and water on the brush. At the same time, you are testing the color and wetness of the brush before you put it on the silk. You want the brush wet enough to make a wash. Number five, think of this as a meditative exercise. Chinese painting isn't something you whip up in a half hour. If you were to use ancient Chinese brush painting techniques. You'd follow a specific order in laying down colors. It has to do with disciplines of rhythm and form, according to age-old principles of Lao Tzu and then Confucius. The tradition is over two thousand years old. Students started writing calligraphy, rows and rows of character, until they were perfect. 
They did this for many years before moving on into actual painting. The repetition of the brush strokes eventually got to be automatic, as if the brush were an extension of the arm itself. By the time they started painting, they didn't even think about technique, just concentrated on the form. At first, students did easy subjects such as bamboo plants, then flowers. Over time, building up their skills, they did people and animals, then mountains and rivers. If they were ever considered good enough, they did landscapes, which were considered the highest form of painting. It's hard nowadays to be that disciplined. Just keep it in mind if you get frustrated. Sit back and immerse yourself in what you are doing. If you've ever meditated, this process works into the prep for taking yourself away from outside distractions. I never painted colors in a specific order, and my paintings turned out okay, I think. But the more I did this type of painting, the easier it was to get into the flow and rhythm of it. Number four, technique. The best way to apply the color is by standing over the work surface. It gives you better mobility with your arm. Brush painting is best done with the brush held perpendicular to the surface. That way, you can move the brush with your whole arm as opposed to just your hand moving your wrist. Pick the brush size you think will be right for the area. You can do the leaves first or the petals. Number three, painting. When you know what areas you're going to fill in first, start preparing the brush. I find the easiest thing to do is paint one color. I start with the lightest colors. For example, we'll do the petals. For water lilies, the petals are normally pink or lavender. This means you'll mix the color on the brush with white. Test the color on your palette. To do this right, you'll build up the colors to get the intensity you want. Prepare your brush by first dipping it in water until it's completely wet. Pick up the color you want, then the white, and mix them by rubbing the brush on the palette. If you don't think the color is light enough, work in some more white. You don't want each petal to be the exact same color. The ones on top are lighter than the lower petals. To reach this effect, don't build up color the same on every petal. Number two, building up color. Every time you lay color on the silk, let it sink in for a moment, then blot it with the cloth or paper towel to avoid getting the silk too wet. Do this over and over until the shade is as deep as you want it. A. Color on brush. B. Test color. C. Apply to silk. D. Blot. E. Repeat. Don't apply as many layers of color on the parts you want to be less intense in color. This will make the flower prettier. When you are finished with one color, move on to the next. If you are doing leaves next, build up the green. Mix in a little blue with it to intensify the color. If you want it darker, mix in a little black. Repeat layering until you have the intensity you want. If you paint a flower that has a center part, which is usually yellow, Use little water on the brush and a lot of color so you don't have to blot it much. You can get just enough water on the brush to pick up the color and then place it in the center full strength. It will be beautiful. Number one, complete the painting. The final step is to sign your artwork. Traditionally, the placement of the signature is carefully chosen and doesn't get plopped in the lower right or left corner. Choose a place where the signature will stand out and place your signature there. If you have a chop, a small stamp with your painting symbol, dip it in red ink made just for that purpose. If not, learn your initials in calligraphy and put the initials in a prominent place. Voila! Enjoy your masterpiece! If you liked our video, be sure to click like and subscribe for more How Expert Top 10 videos for all topics from A to Z in the future. Also, let us know what other topics you want us to do a How Expert Top 10 video in the future in the comments below. Thank you, have an amazing day, and take care.
How Expert Publishes Quick How-To Guides on All Topics from A to Z by Everyday Experts. Visit HowExpert.com to learn more.